Oh, hello, Spark fans. Yeah, sorry, I was just actually using source control for the first time ever properly in Databricks. So that's pretty cool. This week, we have seen the release of repos for Databricks. Now, it's still in public preview, but this is essentially just source control built like someone who's ever used source control before, which is fantastic. So if you haven't seen it before, um, you used to be able to use notebook source control. So on a given notebook, you can associate that back to a Git repo. And then whenever you kind of are making changes, you can commit that change and that'll go down and sync it up. But it relied on you re remembering to add a notebook and actually having to think for every new notebook going, I need to associate this one's source control. And then this one's source control. And this one's a source control. And essentially source control that relies on you remembering to have to do a thing isn't good source control. So we have this new thing now inside Data called repos. Uh, I am so happy because they used to call it um, data science repo back projects or something along those lines. And it's like, it's not just for data science. It's like literally everyone should be using source control. And I'm glad to say it's now called repos for Databricks. And this is now something we can turn on. So we're going to take a look at what it is, how it works, how kind of a rough um, feature branching workflow and how kind of uh, how you might build that. And yeah, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know down in the comments if you're going to use this immediately, if there's any questions, if there's things that you don't like about it, just let us know. All right, let's go and have a look. So first things first, I've got a repo just set up currently. So this is an Azure DevOps repo. I've got a project in here and I've got like a load of files and notebooks and things. Uh, and I've got a couple of branches set up. So I've got my main dev branch, I've got my dev branch and I've got my main branch. So essentially this is where I want to be doing all collaboration. So I'll do create a feature branch off this, make all my changes and then do a pull request of the changes back into our dev branch. Then we can have that as our main place where we're doing testing and we're making sure things all work. And then we can do a pull request from dev into main when we want to release. That's kind of the main quick workflow type thing we want to look at. So that's good. Happy. We can use that dev branch. So how do I actually want to get started? Well, let's, hop over to Databricks. First things first, this is not turned on by default. So you need to be an administrator and you need to go and turn on one of the settings. So I'm gonna hop into the admin console. Whoops. And then I've got advanced over here. So these are all the different features that you can toggle on and off for your given Databricks workspace. Scroll all the way down and then, oh, hidden far, far away where you guys can't even see it. We have repos, which is currently disabled. So I'm going to hit enable. It gives me a warning. There's not a HIPAA um, confirmed. So essentially that is uh, a lot of laws to do with medical um, data. So unless you're doing anything with medical data, you should be fine. And that's now enabled. So I'm going to just hit refresh on my workspace. And lo and behold, we should see, here we go. We've now got a new little repos button hiding over there. That gives us a whole different type of workspace browser. That's now saying, okay, well, this is who you're signed in as. This is my name, me, hello. Um, and I don't currently have a repo associated. So I need to come in here and say, I want to add a repo. And it gives me a clone window. So what do you want to associate it to? So I'm going to hop over here. Uh, I'm going to go into my main repo and I've got that clone button, the same as I would if I was pulling it down locally. I'm going to hit clone, grab that URL directly and just pop it in there. So to recognize that it is an Azure DevOps service, again, we can use this with other data providers, which is great. And what do I want it called? Advancing repo. Sure, why not? So that's gonna create it. It's gonna pull down a local copy. That's essentially just cloned it for me. And you can see it's defaulted to a certain branch, but that is now a copy, a cloned copy of that repo. I can step into it. I can see the files I've got in there. I can go in and actually start working with the notebooks that are inside my um, my particular repo, which is great. Now, there's some limitations about that. Currently, it will only pull back um, Python files. So if you've got other things knocking around your repo, you won't see them in this browser. Uh, and it needs certain tags. So it needs to know it's either a, a Python notebook or a SQL notebook. And there's, there's a few limitations about what you can actually see and work within here because it is a just released preview. So pinch of salt. And yeah, so we can go and have a play and we can go and work with that stuff. But we're talking about feature branching and I don't want to work directly in development. So I need to change the branch that I'm on. So at any point I can go back to my repo and I can click on the branch 
and that'll bring up a kind of essentially a, a workspace manager. What am I currently doing? What branch am I currently on? Well, I can see I've got my dev on main, or I can say, well, actually, I want to create my Simon feature branch. I'm going to go and do that. So that's now going to go back, talk to Azure DevOps, and create a feature branch by cloning the default branch. So I already had dev set as my default branch, so it's creating a clone off that. And there's now we're now working in the Simon feature branch, which is great. Okay. So I can do a pull if I want to refresh that. If I think things are merged, that's fine. Let's now refresh what I've got here. Uh, and I am now working in there. So you can see my branch is currently now my Simon feature branch, which is great. So if I go over here and in, back into branches, I can now see it's created that branch. So that's now actually being created on my behalf. So that's Databricks going and talking properly to uh, Azure DevOps, which is great. Okay, so let's go and make a change. I'm gonna go grab, let's see, I wanna go, I'm gonna clone something. I called that Streamo last time. Let's stick with Streamo, I like it. So that's created a new notebook. So I've made a change. I've created a new object inside my, um, inside my repo. So if I go back over here, I can then actually see it's noticed that there's a change. It said, oh, okay, there's a change. This is what we want to do. This is all the kind of uh, the code that's in there. So it's one file's changed. Here's the compare of that. Uh, and it wants me to go and check it in. So I'm going to go added streamer. And I can commit and push. And that takes it, pushes that into my feature branch. Okay. It kind of makes sense, right? It, it's, it's working as a project source control kind of like you'd expect it to. I didn't have to add the new file, go into the file, tag that, sync that with source control, hit go, and then have that work. It's just all within that one given project. So let's go back and do a change. Let's gonna go open that up. Gonna add in, let's go, I'm gonna do add some markdown. I'm gonna say it's like they spoke to someone who has actually used source control before. Yeah, right. Okay, so there we go. So I've made a change to a notebook, again, going through my repo folder. Again, I can go back, change is committed as soon as I've done it. I can open up my workspace. And again, there's notes I've made a change. It's all new change. And again, we can kind of just quit my sarcastic comment. Oh, really can't type this morning. There we go. I can commit and push and I'll go and push it in. And again, this is all going into my feature branch. So we can do a, like a quick check, right? You know, so we can say, well, this is, this is where we currently are. We're currently in my feature branch and that's everything that we've got. So if I kind of go away from where, where I am currently, if I go into my main area, if I get that repo open again, and I say, I don't want to work in my feature branch anymore. I want to go in my dev branch and go and sync that over. I don't think I need to do a pull for that to have worked. Yeah, so I no longer have that Streamo new file. So by switching branches, I'm now actually live seeing this is what's currently in that branch. Now that was something that didn't really work in the way Databricks had set up their notebook-based Git control before, in that the notebooks were already there and we were just telling it which branch to write back to. Whereas now we're switching out and we're seeing what is actually active in each branch. So if someone else is working on a feature and they've created a load of new stuff, I'm not going to see that. Whereas they would if you were all sharing a workspace and doing as like notebook linked uh, things in your workspace. So it just makes so much more sense. Okay, so that's where we are. Our dev branch doesn't have the code. We've got a feature branch that's got some changes in separately and we need to hook that up. Now to do that, that's called a pull request. Essentially saying my feature branch is done. Take my changes, merge it back into my main branch. And I do that back over in DevOps. So I've got all my changes here. Go in. So well, actually, so far I need to kind of set up my pull request. Can do that uh, based on my commits. So I've got my sarcastic comment coming in, uh, and I need to create a new pull request so I can do new pull request. So I'm going to take Simon feature, my Simon feature branch, into development. So I'm going to say committing my streamo changes. Uh, I can set up some reviewers, I can have a workflow, I can do all that kind of stuff. I'm going to create that pull request. Now that going to do a merge. So it's checking the files that's involved. So it knows there's only one file that's involved and you can see the various things it's got in there. You can see the things that are actually sort of a part of that. 
be the commits that I made. Again, all the normal Git workflow has been logged and put in successfully by Databricks. I can approve that if I needed to, and I can complete that. Now, in this case, I'm going to delete my feature branch. That feature branch journey is complete. I'm going to push it in. So it's going to go, it's going to do that merge. The thing about doing things, currently merging my pull request, and then that's completed. So if I go back to branches, I no longer have that feature branch. And if I go and look inside development, I should see we've now got Streamo added three minutes ago, all gone through its normal state. So that is now kind of what I would want to see people actually doing. If you're going to do a pull request to make sure that is now fully synced. Operation in progress. I think that's automatically doing a pull request whenever you do that anyway. Um, we go in, should see in sanitation, we've now got Streamo. That is a that, that's how people actually use source control. And that kind of just makes sense to me. Now, some people don't like feature branching. Some people prefer to do everything kind of about committing a dev. Some people don't even have dev and main. And you just have a single um, one kind of uh, primary code line and you work with that. Don't really care how you want to structure your projects. What I care is that you have the technology to work in the way that makes sense for you. Now, we do that a lot because we're working with kind of multiple teams all doing kind of um, breaking changes across lots of different things. It makes sense for them to feature branch it and merge those changes into their feature branch so that they can actually check that on PR back into the dev branch. It makes entire sense for the way that we work. And now we can actually do that. So one or two things to note. Uh, certainly this is, this is kind of like having it locally cloned on your machine. It's not, but it's kind of like that. In that you can't really get data factory to kick off a notebook like this. You can't hook it in to the YDU ecosystem. These aren't the same as notebooks that are deployed into your workspace. Now, technically you can, I think, have something in your workspace that triggers something that's in a repo, but it's a little bit of a hack. What you'd normally expect to see is that action that I just did of taking my feature branch, doing a PR of that back into the development branch would trigger off DevOps. It would trigger off an automated release pipeline that would take my changes and deploy it back into my dev environment. So I'd expect to see in my workspace that hydrate folder. So that is my one that primary had been released because it's out of sync currently. So in repo, I'm working, I'm developing things. And then when I commit that and when I do a PR of those changes into my development branch, that gets pushed out and I'll see it in my main workspace. And then it's in my main workspace where I can hook things up to data factory, to some automated pipelines, to a function, whatever it happens to be. So think about them slightly differently. You've got your repo dev environment and then your workspace for your like current dev account. Kind of like you're doing data factory and other things where you have your, your Git version where you're working on it and then you publish it to your live account. It's the same kind of idea. So there's a little bit of work to set that up, but that's the work that we're doing already elsewhere just as a workaround for a load of stuff. So it makes entire sense for how that fits together. So more information on that. There is now all the documentation there. You've got Git repos for Git integration and tells you about how to, those things that we've just done, how it works, how you create things, how you work with it. Um, there is an API coming. So you can kind of just programmatically uh, work with your repo, which is nice. And it has some suggestions about, you know, how you do that workflow, which is kind of what we've just gone through. So we're gonna, you know, you clone it, create a new feature branch, do your things, commit it down. Do your pull request inside your DevOps provider. Sorry, not your DevOps provider, Git provider. Uh, do that merge into the main branch, push it out again. Same kind of things. Uh, and it does have some of those limitations that we mentioned. So looking at the comments, looking at what files can go in there, looking at how what things are allowed and not allowed in your repo currently. So I do suggest having a run through, getting fully up to date with everything in there. But yeah, otherwise, I just say, give it a go. I mean, so there's already one or two people who ping me yesterday saying, we're now using this in production. And it literally came out, I think, on Tuesday. So it is it is brand new, but it's it's just it just makes sense. And I'm really angry that they just didn't do this years ago because it just makes sense for how people actually work with source control. So if you're currently running any kind of engineering project, if you're currently doing any data science project, if you are currently writing notebook code in any way that is going to go into any kind of production workflow, then you probably should be looking at this. You're probably sighing a massive sigh of relief having looked at that stuff. And yeah, give it a go. See what you think. Let us know down in the comments uh, what you think, how it works. 
Are you, are you as excited for this as I am? Because literally, this is just, it's been a thorn in my side for years, and I'm very happy to see it resolved. Um, but yeah, let us know down in the comments what you think. As always, do not forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, we'll see you next time with more news. Cheers.